I got good news for you. I know for a fact that this is the sort of wine that's 24 bucks a bottle, but two for 45 at BWS and it's Pinot Grigio. I highly doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, another episode of Blind Wine Tasting. I'm about to try all of these wines without knowing anything about them. We actually bought these from our good friends at Sometimes Always. Uh, in the Discord link below, you can get a 10% discount code on all of these without too much mucking around. Let's get into it. Like and subscribe. I'm growing up, I'm going to be more responsible, which means that I'm not going to drink wines that I don't like anymore, I'm going to spit them out, which is the first for me on this show, and uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm ever going to look back. It could last one week, it might last forever, let's see. Got a cool little honey thing, uh, tropical fruits, so we could be sitting in that sort of unoaky Chardonnay territory, or we could be moving more towards, I don't know, Roussan, Marsan, really a whole kind of suite of different, oh actually, I've got a Shannon vibe. It's got that, oh man, that's actually, a, this is a perfect example of well integrated oak. It doesn't really dominate the palette here, but it's really nice and seamless in here. That kind of nutty, vanilla-y character is all there, but it doesn't take away from this like awesome like lemon pithy, lemon curdy aspect to it. There's almost like this like lime zest thing too. It's really refreshing. Um, it reminds me of autumn. It reminds me of past loves in the sense that it's oakery. It's oaky, it's buttery, there's leaves on the ground. It's not that expensive, I don't think. I haven't had many expensive autumns. Well, Lockie, what is that? Straight out of the gate. You know, this is one of those things, you can't judge a wine so quickly. I can look at it and be like, uh, it's white. I could smell it and be like, uh, it's kind of neutral. Then you can taste it, and if you kind of like grab all of these elements and mash them, mash them together, and you walk away going, whoa. Uh, I'm definitely getting 12 of these, uh, mainly because I would just drink it heaps. Uh, and also, if I kept, if forgot about a few and kept them in the cellar for a while, I actually developed really, really well. Moving onwards, uh, we have our first red. It's giving me, I mean, just looking at it, you get this Pinot vibe because you've got uh, obviously uh, a deeper scarlet red, but it's in a slight little brown tinges here. So typically that's what I would associate. Oh yeah, but not on the nose. Whoa, where we've been catapulted right into Italy here. This is Slovenian oak, blueberry fruited at its finest. I was not expecting the tannin and the tannin is sublime. Lock it in, Brendan Carter, 12 bottles. Henry Doyle, one bottle. Just gonna say that. Miraculously, two wines I've wanted to swallow so far. Uh, Victorian Pinot, if you're half your salt, you can smell on a Victorian Pinot from a mile away. Lockin, you've always said that. Oh, yummy. Oh, yummy. Um, okay, straight up 100 bucks, I'm buying 12. That is amazing Nebbiolo from the northern part of Italy, otherwise known as Piemonte, and I imagine probably Barolo. I'm now a little bit less, I know it's from Victoria, but I'm, I was thinking that the winemaker's mother's maiden name might have been Jennifer Smith, but I can't, I, I, I'm not quite there with it. Um, it's definitely Victorian Pinot though, like put your hat on it, put the house on it. Number three, back to white wine. Smells lean, a little bit reductive, a little bit of gun, gun flint, a little bit of struck match, that's fun, that's cool. Pretty mellow. Nice and textural, nice and easy going. Cool, 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 cool. I think it's a Riesling, potentially. Like the sweetness that I'm smelling, it actually coming through as acid when you're tasting it. Uh, yeah, it's got nice sprightly acidity. It's like a nice, like a lighter style of wine. It feels to me like someone's played around with some oxidative Riesling um, or something like that. That's my gut instinct here. Not screaming mortgage prices at me. Like it's not super expensive, I don't think. But once again, very drinkable, my goodness. Who thought I was gonna need Spittoon this week? All right, Rizza. Uh, uh, a Tassie Riesling comes at a, um, as a premium, and I reckon this might be about $45. You know, I'd probably buy six, not because I wouldn't buy 12, just because maybe having a little bit of variety uh, would certainly help. This wine isn't screaming a particular variety that it's made from, or screaming a particular style. It it sits as a, a really, for me, a uh, like a mid-weight, mid-week, gap filler wine for when you just have the thirst, but you don't want to go all out with some of these other wines that we've just tasted. So um, yeah, six for me. Wine number four. This is a very clear little white number. Um, looks like it's been really nicely filtered. Doesn't have any bits running through it. Wow, kind of smells like a full nappy. Um. <laughs> Whoa. Some age to it. Petro petroleum kerosene thing you see with some aged freezing and 
far out, this looks pretty good. Yeah, all that kind of crushed, rocky, citrusy thing. Or maybe reduction, this, this could be Chablis. Fuck, I don't know. It's got a nice vegetal ripeness to it, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean a really good way. When I say things like vegetal, I'm talking very phenolically ripe Riesling. Um, sour, like citrusy, it kind of just tastes like a, you go to a fancy restaurant and you've got a kid with you and you're like, hey, can I have a lemonade? And they're like, hmm, we don't have any lemonade, but we can get, do you a house infused lemon syrup and sparkling water, sir. It's got a, it's got a, I feel like it probably has a little bit of residual sugar here, but there's a, a little bit of film here. So, which gives me Riesling vibes again. Rizza again, just, I'm going with my gut here. You might have chucked two Rieslings in the lineup. I, I can never know what you're gonna do. You gave us six Chardonnays the other week, so it might be multiple reasons this week. Who fucking knows? Woo wee! That is sick. Uh, all right. I, I think we've got some really expensive wines here. I'm going to throw seventy dollars a bottle at that, and I'm gonna grab twelve. Number five. Lucky has done his last urine test into this glass. It seems. Last last drug sample here. Holy fuck. Very orange wine. Slightly cloudy, but not cloudy enough to kind of think that uh, they haven't done any elevage. It's actually got a really, really nice um, sort of uh, haze and hue to it that's, that's quite tailored. So we'll see what it is. Some natty, skinzy orange thing would be my estimate orange thing. If I'm going to drink orange wine, I want it to be like this. It's because it's really quite captivating. I reckon these are expensive. I'm going to drop 55 bucks and I'm going to grab 12. Because what this is, is an incredibly well-made orange wine that has had a lot of tailoring and tinkering to. It has a marvelous phenolic grip. It is an orange wine that asserts itself as an orange wine. This could slip in to all those meals and dishes that you have struggled to match wine with. We're talking Thai beef salad, we're talking uh, offal, we're talking salumi, we're talking stinky, stinky as all heck cheeses. With orange wine, it's really hard to guess the price uh, because sometimes it is bone cheap and sometimes it's like, oh no, you don't understand that like the donkeys that eat in the field that this wine came from have never been like around other donkeys. Um, orange wine, not necessarily my thing, unless it's the exact sort of orange wine I like. That ain't it. Italian orange. Sounds like I'm buying a convertible and choosing my color. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is absolutely from the top drawer. One of the best orange wines I've had this year. It's, um, it's outstanding. Finally, wine number six, the big red daddy of them all. Really juicy looking red here. Looks like that Cab Mackey. It's got that kind of Cab Mackey purple tint to it. If, you, if I show it, hold, hold it up to the light. It's got these really like, awesome purple highlights. If you can kind of see that with the new lighting we've got going on. Like right at the edges there. And it smells like it too. Like a fresh plum. Yum, that smells so good. That smells like raspberries and lollies and all fun things. Sweet tooth sugar. Holy shit, this is good. Oh, man. Pino of an otherworldly order, either crew level burgundy. Although I have to say the um, there's a pristineness of fruit here. I'm not saying that burgundy doesn't achieve that, I'm just saying it's so pure and primary that I'm kind of thinking it's from New Zealand. Fun, really good fun. Uh, one of those wines that I will happily drink a few bottles of. Yeah, just bright, refreshing, juicy, You've got some great structure, some good refreshing acidity, and all those kind of plush, playful fruits that you're really looking for in like a really great little picnic afternoon red wine. It uh, feels like car carbonically macerated or something like that, or just like a really juice fun, good fun light red. Wine of the lineup, that's 12. It's similar to the second one in the sense that it's like a medium weight red with a bit of fruit flavor in it, some raspberry, um, all fun things. Yeah, delicious drink bottles of it. Uh, I reckon it's going to be expensive as well. I'm going to go Pinot Noir again, except this time it's French Pinot. And Laron, I reckon, is the mother's, the winemaker's mother's maiden name. The surname Laron. So, Laron. This is definitely my most expensive week yet on the show. Uh, and I think for good reason, as we shall find out, hopefully, uh, when we bring the other guys back in. So, let's have a look. Are you going to say something? I don't know. Are we ready? Yeah, we said that. Okay! <laughs> Lineup. Loved it. And a half. It was yeah. Cold. Honestly, like, there was no, no, nothing was like even remotely bad. It was just levels of good. 
There going is. from good to absolutely incredible. There's one wine on here that I didn't buy 12 of. Oh, there's one on here that I did buy 12 of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, wine number one. Uh, you boys know I absolutely love this. Mm, yeah, I guess it is. In my gut feeling told me this is my favorite grape variety. This is Chenin Blanc. That's uh, a bet it's going to be Chablis now. <laughs> this one's the bet it's going to be Chablis. If that's Chablis, <laughs> what the fuck is going on with Chablis? It's yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, this is Chardonnay. It was $45 a bottle and I want to create it. This is what Chenin does when it makes it more. Thinks that it's yeah, Chardonnay, Chardonnay, but it's, it's not. not. <laughs> it's not. All right, yeah. deal. He gets right. the crown if it's Chardonnay. Yeah, straight away. Lucky, yeah. what was it? Oh! oh that's expensive Chardonnay. <laughs> what was it? Oh, God, no, I think this might be a lot. Do we have think this could be? What's this could be some Chenin and Blanc. Uh, Muscadet! Muscadet! What the fuck is that Muscadet? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Melon de Begonia is the great variety. Often confused with uh, Shannon, so our strike rate still remains pretty much zero. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely not Chardonnay, but easily confused. Like Muscadet, Melon de Begonia, uh, incredible grape variety. It always looks very similar to, uh, to Shannon, just without the acid. Mm. I think it's a high acid Muscadet. It's really cool. Fuck, that's the best Muscadet I've ever had in my life. I 100% agree. Uh, would I? 100% agree. I, I would have, I would have very rarely spent ninety dollars on a bottle of that, but I'll do it for that. That was, that was fucking go. yummy. Was Holy cool. shit! Uh, number two. Brandon, how many bottles? <laughs> what do you reckon? Twelve. It's definitely twelve. It's definitely twelve. Did you take one bottle? I took six. Damn! Hey. Damn! I, call, I went in here. I was like, I'm gonna take six. Henry's gonna take one. You're gonna take twelve. <laughs> uh, because I reckon this is like awesome Alpine, like north, really north, north of Italy, uh, Nebbiolo. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I actually looked at it. And I was like, oh, it looks like Pinot, and it smelled it. And I was like, ooh. I was on a hundred bucks and ooh. twelve. You thought this is baller? I thought. Well, I thought yes. <laughs> yeah. I wanted. Uh, I thought seventy bucks for this bad boy. Uh, cool. Six for thirty-five. What have we got, Lucky? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Victorian Pinot Noir. Welcome to the chat. Long game, game Nebbiolo. Yeah. Nice. Oh, we man. found How a bit. Thirty-six. What? Thirty-six bucks. Like, I am buying. That I'll buy the either. shit out of that. That is an absolute bargain. I am going to buy more of that for the seller. Like when you when you have a hankering for Barolo, but you don't have the budget for Barolo it. Barolo on a budget. Yeah, that's incredible. That's bonkers. That, that, that's stonking. We've had some amazing value wines in the show, but that's the best value because I thought it was like at the top tier of Alpine Neb or regular like Barolo. But it's thirty-six dollar longe. Yeah, and I've always had a really high opinion of Victorian Pinot Noir, so that speaks volumes to how good this wine is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, uh, we're getting into the light aromatic right whites, and I thought this was pretty good. I thought this was a nice bright acid. It had this really awesome, like nutty, like husky thing. It smelled like. Like walnut husk, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is really Absolutely. weird. Sorry to be a wanker about saying husk as a tasting note. No, it's but good. <laughs> it doesn't smell like the nut. Uh, $45, three bottles. 30 bucks, six bottles. Ooh, we're in like a yeah. moderate bracket. We're, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we all enjoyed it. 45. Yeah, cool. Bang, bang. Nice. Price is nice. right, baby. Nice, nice. For Rizza. Rizza. Rizza price. Oh, no. Alagote. Of course it is. Don't say, of course it is. No, it's just like it's every time we're just like, oh, I don't really know what grape variety it is. I'm like, it's probably Aligote. It's probably Aligote or Muscadet. Say that then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's of sick. course it's Aligote. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll like, scream no, it's Aligote no now that I've seen it written on the label. No oh. one guesses Aligote. No, no, even, one, like, no one does. Not even like Master Songs nah, guess Aligote. It's a that. stupid that's grape variety, but I really liked it. I'd still buy six. Yeah, I'd buy a bunch. It's a really good one. The label kind of looks like the business card of someone who works on a golf course on the Sunshine Coast, though, so I don't really like that too much. That's a really accurate. Uh, number four, back to the dozens for Brendan. Uh, this looked like exceptional Riesling. Love it. Uh, it was one of those wines where it's just like, if it was $30, I'll buy a dozen, probably more. If it was anywhere north of probably 60, I'd probably take just six, because it was just, that's enough. Mm. But it was hella good. I got good news for you. I know for a fact that this is the sort of wine that's 24 bucks a bottle, but two for 45 at BWS and it's Pinot Grigio. I highly doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you be surprised? I, I would say this is $80 yeah. German Riesling uh, of one of the higher orders and off dry. Lachlan, what is it? Um, oh, yeah, you're in that dude. Two for 45. Two for <laughs> Yeah, well done. Well, uh, well done. Very ripe. Uh, off dry. Awesome. Nail like. Yeah. And this is a, one of the cool things with German Riesling is that it is it is like really expressive. And the reason like how they actually um, uh, distinguish the levels of ripeness and the level of sweetness, um, it's 
it's really quite an accurate way to drink through reason. Obviously not in this setting, but if you're presented six in a row of the same thing, it's actually a really quite easy to be able to pick your way through them. Um, so as a wine, even as a wine novice, I think Riesling is one of the first things I think people should really wrap their heads around. It helps them understand wine really That's well. That's fucking yeah. crazy. That's why a year and a half into the show, I'm still guessing it's Pinot Gris. We'd onto yeah. this orangey one. Uh, yeah. yeah. Kicked ass. Best orange wine I've had all year. Amazing. Absolutely next yeah. level stuff. Serious, serious I, gear. I was also into it. Uh, let's stop talking about it and let's find out what the hell it is, Lockie. Where I wanted at? 12 for 70 bucks. 12 for 55. 1 for 60. 54. That's, that's great. That's really well priced. Damn that's close. actually extremely oh priced. Ah, yes. Oh. Italian orange wine. So this is actually made by a bunch of nuns. Of course it is. <laughs> really? Yeah, I knew is. it! Oh, <laughs> I was gonna guess it was made by a bunch of nuns, I just didn't say yeah, it. Um, I don't know, yeah, so uh, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, because I've never actually said it, I just know the label. Canobium? Uh, yeah, something Canobium. like that. Um, but yeah, this is made in um, Lazio. Lazio. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, cool. So yeah, this is made in a, um, a monastery by a bunch of nuns. Sick. Um, yeah, and it's one of the kind of more heralded uh, orange wine producers in the world. And at 54 bucks. That's great. To buy anything made by a bunch of nuns from halfway around the world. Like, what sort of world are we living in right now? Well, nuns aren't, awesome. Nuns aren't <laughs> greedy. They're famously selfless, aren't they? It's Isn't exactly right. Yeah. yeah dude, they make this for free, mate. Yeah. And Whoopi Goldberg's <laughs> Just for one. board. Uh, no, that was a movie. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was an act. This <laughs> wine was made by Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> and if I, if, hey, look, for wines made by Whoopi Goldberg, 55 bucks is pretty good for me. It's pretty good. Uh, that's great. That's yeah, amazing. Grab that is, cool. that is it. amazing. I'm like, can I borrow that? Because I want to like write down wines that I'm legitimately going to buy. Yeah, go oh, for it. Too. Have you not bought all of the bottles that you said? That's my life! That's why he's a homeowner and we're not. <laughs> <laughs> and on to the last one. My initial thoughts with this wine was, I don't really care what it is. I think it's fucking delicious. Yep. Then mm -hmm. you, you guys come out and speak to me as like, man, this wine goddamn slaps. And I come in here and smell it. And it's like, you're absolutely right. This fucking slaps. Yeah. Uh, but I initially said three bottles and 35 bucks. And I know that ain't it, man. I know it's going to be up there. Uh, yeah. Amazing wine, though. I was, I was, I thought 80 bucks and I would buy 12. Yeah, 70 for 12. What do we got, Lucky? Oh! We're treated here. We're Is big, it made by Laurent? Big Berg. Big Berg. Big Berg. Absolute yeah. Berg energy. Holy it's, it's funny because like seven is meant to be actually not not this like this is quite powerful and got a lot of weight and density to it 2019 is, 2019 was fucking scorching yeah yeah but it's like it's just amazing like a, a, what a wondrous example of premier crew like if it i mean and you saw this as well like you know you've come a long way in terms of wine tasting but to actually get there and just uh, after these so these are all in in a sense red herrings before you get to something like this and to be able to pick out amongst it and kind of go what? That's different. Uh, uh, no, yeah, now I'm coming back and now having context to that thing, I'm like, holy goddamn shit. And I know we're all drinking after that. Uh, and out in the green room, we're gonna yeah, have out in the green room, yeah, we're <laughs> gonna, gonna, gonna be burgundy <laughs> and just like, come and join us. Like, yeah. this is one of the Jesus. first wines that we've actually gone, like, it's $110 and we're you like, like nah, that is the yeah, absolute yeah, best yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna buy some of the $110? Yeah. Yeah. Guess who's paying who here? Jeez. Definitely a lineup where it's like, if you want to spend a nice amount of money on a really good wine to please someone, We've given you a great bunch of options of like a really awesome white wine that you probably haven't had before, an amazing burgundy, and if they're a fucking natty head, you've got to grab some of that. It's awesome. 100%. Uh, That's oh. a mix six right there. People should buy the six, the six yeah. bottles of wine. If you're earning together. six figures, here's a mix six for you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the six figure six, mix six, 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 six figures. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's end. Let's end this. Uh, uh, thank you so this. much, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>